Hey guys, I'm reading Lesson 24, which is Dog of the Sea Waves by James Rumford. Let's meet the author and illustrator, James Rumford. A longtime resident of Hawaii, James Rumford hopes his readers will learn aloha nina, or to cherish these islands as much as he does. Scattered throughout the pages of Dog of the Sea Waves are drawings of plants and animals that are found in Hawaii. Many of them are at risk of dying out. Rumford included these to show that Hawaii's natural beauty needs our protection. Our skill this week is author's purpose. We wanted to figure out why in the world the author wrote this story. This is called realistic fiction as the genre. It means that it could actually happen in real life, but it is not. it has not happened, okay? As far as we know. So let's look at the essential question. It says, what changes do volcanoes cause? Okay, so I want you to be thinking about that as we are going through the story. Five brothers explore the Hawaiian islands. Manu, the youngest brother, saves the life of an injured seal, and the two become friends. When it's time for the brothers to go home, Manu is unsure if he'll ever see his friend again. And this is Ahau Patrice now. In the days when the sun, the moon, and the stars guided birds with seeds in their bellies to these islands, when ocean waves brought driftwood teeming with life, when storms brought frightened birds in the clouds and insects on the wind, the Hawaiian islands grew green and lush. The streams and lagoons rippled with fish, and the forest flashed with the feathers of birds and the rainbow wings of insects. And this is a belted wrasse. The Hawaiian islands welcomed all life that made the long, long journey to its shores. And some 2,000 years ago, they embraced the first people to come. In those days of first canoes, first footprints, first campfires, there were five brothers who came from their home far to the south to explore these islands. They were Hoku, who loved the stars, Naale, who loved the sea, Opua, who loved clouds, Makani, who loved the wind, and Manu, who loved birds. This is the Kahamehameha butterfly. One night, soon after their arrival, Hoku said, See, my brothers, that new star I've discovered, it always points north. Everyone except Manu looked up at the sparkling North Star. Everyone except Manu began talking excitedly about all the other new things they had discovered. New things, Manu exclaimed. I miss the old things. Where are the coconuts, the bananas, the sweet potatoes, and how about the pigs, the chickens, the dogs? We'll go home and bring these things back here with us, said Hoku. We're coming back, Manu cried. I don't want to come back. I just want to go home. But home was a long ocean voyage away, and there were much to do before they could leave food and water to gather and sails to repair, so no one spoke. The next day, as the brothers were exploring a lagoon, Manu spotted an animal lying at the water's edge. It's a dog, my brothers, a dog! At last, something familiar in this strange land. But when they got close, they saw that it was like no dog they had ever seen before. It had flippers for legs, a fish's tail, and the body of a dolphin, and it was badly hurt. Manu tried to calm the animal. He brought cool water and cleaned the wound. He built a shelter against the sun and kept the fur wet with seawater. The brothers left Manu. They had no time for an animal that was going to die. They had to prepare for the long sea voyage home. But the animal didn't die. I will call you dog of the sea waves, Manu said on the third day as he fed him fish. At the end of the week, the two had their first swim together, and before long, they were playing tag in the waves. Manu made up a silly chant. Dog of the sea waves, dog with no paws, dog with no ears, dog with no wag. We're friends. Manu giggled, and the dog of the sea wave tickled his cheek with his whiskers. Come help me draw berries and roots for the voyage home, called Hoku. We need fish, scolded Naele. There's water together, scowled Opua, and sails to repair, cried Makani. But Manu pretended not to hear. Instead, he and Dog of the Sea Waves played together and got into all kinds of trouble. They terrorized the fish Naale was trying to catch and made a mess of the beach where Hoku was drying food. They played with Makani's ropes and accidentally pulled Apua's boards off the boat, tripping Makani, who fell into the water. No one laughed. The two were separated, and Manu was put to work. Manu gathered berries for Hoku. He caught fish for Naale. He fetched water for Apua. He twisted rope for Makane, but every evening after his work was done, he slipped off to meet his friend, and they played in the waves until it got too dark to see. Then Manu swam ashore, and Dog of the Sea Waves went hunting for food. 
After many months of hard work, the boat was finally ready to leave. At the last moment, Manu dived into the water to say goodbye to Dog of the Sea Waves. As the brothers yelled for Manu to get aboard, Dog of the Sea Waves brushed his whiskers against Manu's cheek and disappeared beneath the waves. The brothers sailed down the island chain. When they came to the last island, Apua said, Is that a cloud on the side of the mountain or smoke? Let's go see. Curious, the brothers anchored their boat in a quiet bay and swam ashore. Halfway up the mountain, Makane felt a warm wind and hesitated, but his brothers told him not to worry. After a few more steps, Manu noticed that the birds went silent, but his brothers paid no attention. Then, a jolt. The earth heaved up and slammed the brothers to the ground. Deep cracks appeared, then flames. Hoku grabbed Manu's hand and the brothers fled down the slope, but a river of fire cut them off from the sea and forced them to the cliffs. The earth shuddered and the five brothers jumped into the sea far below. But the sea they landed in was a monster. It thrashed from the earthquakes. It hissed from the burning lava. It lashed out at the brothers and grabbed Manu. In an instant, he was gone. Makane filled his lungs with air and went to the very depths of the ocean, but there was no sign of Manu. Opua, with his voice like thunder, shouted for Manu above the crashing waves, but there was no answer. Naale, who loved the sea, begged it to be calm, but it wouldn't listen. All this time, Manu was fighting to get to the surface, but the sea wouldn't let it go. Then he felt the whiskers. Manu clasped his arms around Dog of the Sea Waves, and up they went. It was Hoku who spotted them. The brothers raced toward Manu and cradled him above the waves. Manu, Manu, they cried over and over as they made their way to the boat. And to Dog of the Sea Waves, they chanted their thanks. Dog that swims the depths, dog that braves the curves, dog that moves the sea, dog that cares for our brother. The brothers then weighed anchor and headed for the southern sea and home. Manu stood on the deck and listened to the dog of the sea waves barking goodbye. We'll be back, Manu shouted. And when they returned, they came with their families. They embraced the land and made it their home. So, we are doing the author's purpose that's our main focus this time so we need to figure out why the author would have written this and we're going to talk about the illustrations we need to look at these illustrations because they are beautiful illustrations and we want to see what kind of mood or feeling they convey as we're reading them okay and what kind of different things that we can see as it says the brothers look frightened in some of them or the dark blue waves are high and dangerous so mono is being carried away by the sea so the mood is tense and scary so we need to look at that okay Reread and reread, guys, okay?